Welcome in episode 18 of Mike on the Mic. We had a full weekend of sports. Mostly NFL is what we're going to get into today. A lot of games played. We will get into that right after. Would you rather? Would you rather only wear one color each day? Or have to wear seven colors each day. I'm a matching guy. I like to match my my hat, my shoes, and my gear. But seven colors? No, we'll just go one tone, one color each day. Would you rather eat rice with every meal and never be able to eat bread? Or eat bread with every meal and never be able to eat rice? I don't want to eat either with every meal, but I I really don't care about the rice thing. Uh, So I guess we'll we'll take the bread. Would you rather travel the world for a year, all expenses paid, or have $40,000 to spend on whatever you want? I'll take the 40 grand right now. It'll be gone in two days. Would you rather be able to go to any theme park in the world for free for the rest of your life Or eat for free at any drive-thru restaurant for the rest of your life. Uh, I will eat for free. I I like theme parks, but the rarity uh, that I go to them, I'll pay for it. So I'll just pop up to a drive-thru, say, uh, give them my VIP card, and I will eat for free. Would you rather be the absolute best at something that no one takes seriously or be well above average but not anywhere near the best at something well respected uh i'll take the second one i don't know if like joey chestnut in the hot dog eating contest he's the best in the world and that's all fine and dandy but green bay greg is basically the only one who who likes him and who cares so i'll just be uh, above average and uh well respected Would you rather it be impossible for you to be woken up for 11 straight hours every day, but you wake up feeling amazing, or you can be woken up normally, but never feel totally rested? Uh, 11 hours is almost half my day, and I I don't need to feel totally rested to feel fine. Woke up very early today to come in, get this show done, and I feel great. Totally rested? No. Great. Absolutely. Would you rather have everything in your house perfectly organized by a professional or have a professional event company throw the best party you've ever been to in your honor? I want a party for myself in my honor by a professional company. That sounds amazing. Would you rather have unlimited amounts of any material you want to build a house, but you have to build the house all by yourself? Or have a famed architect design and build you a modest house? Uh, I'll take the modest house. If you gave me all the stuff in the world and told me to build it, it would never, ever get done. Would you rather never sweat again, but not be prone to heat stroke or never feel cold again, but cold still physically affects you? Uh, This is this is a pretty easy one for myself. Uh, I, I sweat a lot in the summer. It, it gets rather humid here in Minnesota. This is a Minnesota-based show, Mike on the Mic. So I will choose never sweating again. Well, good. That was a fun way to uh, to get into the show. I don't know if you noticed this. We are a, a live interactive show. I am live on Twist Facebook, RTF Sports Network. Facebook, we are podcastable on all the podcast platforms. But on the top right, if you are watching, you can see that all access. 
little logo. There's more to come on that. RTF Sports Network is doing a rebrand to All Access Sports Network, soon to be live with a www, allaccesssportsnetwork.com. So more of that to come, but exciting stuff Right there. Uh, I am a spinoff show from Twist the Weekend Sports Talk, along with uh, Green Bay Greg, GBG, and Benzie's Bit, featured by Matt Benz. We're all spinoff shows, but the main show, the flagship, is Twist the Week in Sports Talk. You can find our website at twistsportstalk.com. I'm also on the Twitter. You can find me on the Twitter at Got My Own show that's right at got my own show all right well the nfl was back started last thursday with the kansas city chiefs and houston texans i wonder who won that that would be the chiefs routing the texans 34 to 10 deshaun watson didn't really play like himself ended the game with 253 yards a pick and a tutty think the main thing to see out of the Chiefs or excuse me the Texans was David Johnson actually looked like the old David Johnson I have him in fantasy football he had 11 carries for 77 yards in a touchdown Will Fuller looked great I think a lot of people a lot of the uh, experts from the four letter network not AASN but the other four letter network uh, thought he was going to have a breakout year if he could just stay healthy Patty Mahomes looked like himself, didn't throw for a ton of yards with 211, but did have three touchdowns. The big thing was CEH, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He had a first round pick hand picked running back by Patty Mahomes. Um, but he he went off and, and kind of looked like everybody thought he would. 138 yards on 25 carries and a touchdown. He's going to be big in the passing game. Um I think was targeted once or twice, but didn't have any catches, but looked good. So I caught about three games uh, this weekend, including that one. So we're going to touch on those first and then just get into some of the box scores. Uh, The next game I caught was my Minnesota Vikings (sighs) taking on the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, so uh, the Vikings got got stomped. Uh, a lot of takeaways from, from that game. Two of the worst plays uh, that were called the whole game was a play action on the one-yard line where the Vikings got a safety. So that was very impressive uh, play call by Mike Zimmer. So thank you for that. The other one was a fourth and three, which I was excited that we went for it. Um, I, I was glad about that, but we went deep uh, and, and we're not successful. Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know, lit Minneapolis on fire. L- not literally, you know, there's been a lot of that going on. But uh, yeah, he threw 44 times for 364 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Uh, the Vikings, de- Yannick Ngakwe, who we traded a second round pick for. I don't know if he needs Hunter to look good. I don't think he had much else going on in Jacksonville, but uh, he he looked terrible. I think he had one quarterback hit, and it was just unimpressed, very unimpressed. You know, the Vikes D uh, typically is a top 10 defense every year. We knew it was going to look different. We lost, you know, three of our, our starting cornerbacks, so we drafted – a ton. Uh, Benzie's boy, Jeff Gladney. I don't even think he hit the field till the fourth quarter. I didn't hear his name at all. Uh, Cam Dantzler, who was the Vikings' third round pick, uh, started for us and was super hyped up in, in training camp. Uh, no preseason. But when you're going against Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams is one of the best receivers in the league. I think he was thrown to 17 times. 14 catches, 156 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, they really took advantage of, you know, our lack of experience on the defensive side. And it's scary when when you think about what the outlook looks like 
you know, for the Vikings. I, I came into it pretty excited, but the trouble is the only missing piece that that we had was Daniil Hunter. Uh, if he's going to make that big of a difference, uh, he's a great player, but I, I just don't see it. So it's it's troubling as a Vikings fan to watch a game like that because where are we going to get better? You know, I, I had flashbacks of playing San Francisco in the playoffs last year, and Green Bay got got outed by them as well. But the play calling is is very dry. It's forced. You know, we're going to be a run for run first team, so we're going to run, run, run. It's like no, that needs to. You should get the run going by getting the pass game going first. The Vikings offense looked good when it was panicked and rushed and and ready to roll. You know, when when we try to force a game plan by shoving the run down their throats, it it doesn't work out. You know, Kirk Cousins' box score wasn't horrible: nineteen to twenty five, two fifty nine two touchdowns in a pick, but I believe at halftime he was two for two for 34 yards. You know, Delvin Cook, 50 yards. He did have the two touchdowns, so for fantasy purposes, didn't have a bad game. Adam Thielen looked great. Six receptions, 110 yards, two tutties. Average catch rate of 18.3. So really, besides for that, I mean, it, it seemed like Adam Thielen just caught everything thrown his way. Uh, Justin Jefferson, the first round rookie, had two catches for 26 yards. So the box score did not look good, but I was telling Green Bay Greg I had him and Benzie over and, and uh, another buddy and his gal for the border battle. But the two catches for 26 yards, you can see flashes in him. I, I really hope they get him going throughout the year because um, he's going to be fun to watch. I mean, just getting it and going uh, was was fun. So... Yeah, horrible outcome. At this point, uh, you know, maybe we can get a top five pick and another quarterback. Uh, it wasn't Kirk Cousins' fault. You know, I, I've talked about this outside of Mike on the mic before. You know, our coaching staff is old. Gary Kubiak, Don Capers, Mike Zimmer. I mean, we're just, we're old. You have, you know, Andy Reid and Mike McCarthy in Dallas, we'll get to that game next, who are innovative still, and, and their offenses are just something else. But Zimmer is just so old school and so stuck in his ways. And it's just, I either hope that we turn it around next week right away, or let's just lose them all, get some young, fresh, innovative coaches in there, get a new quarterback. You look at Lamar Jackson, who is just proven everybody wrong again this year to start it off. I believe he had like 300 yards before all purpose yards before halftime yesterday. But uh, yeah, so the third game I caught was the Cowboys in the Rams. That was Sunday night football. The one big takeaway is the Rams looked much better than last year. They look like the Rams of two years ago, that $5 billion stadium, though it was empty, is very, very impressive. Uh, that was a, a hell of a stadium. And for the most part, a pretty pretty good game. The Rams did win 20-17, to 17, led by Jared Goff, who didn't throw a touchdown. His release was much quicker. You could tell he worked a lot on that. Robert Woods was all over the place, 105 yards, six catches. Malcolm Brown, who didn't get the start, rookie Cam Akers got the start, but Malcolm Brown was all over the place. 18 carries, 79 yards, two touchdowns. He also had three catches for 31 yards. Cam Akers, 14 carries, but only 39 yards, averaging 2.8. So it looks like they want to get him going. They did draft... Uh, him in the second round and Van Jefferson in the second round, most likely to replace uh, the loss of Todd Gurley and Brandon Cooks. They didn't have a first-round pick, so they didn't draft for best player available. They drafted for position, but I think they they hit on both of them. Time will tell. Ezekiel Elliott looked great. 22 carries, 96 yards, and a touchdown. Also through the air, he had three catches, 31 yards. And a touchdown. C.D. Lamb, this was a weekend of rookies. You know, all the talk of no preseason. None of these rookies are going to be able to get, you know, any, any work done before the regular season. It's going to be tough for them to get going. You know, Sunday, all the box scores 
rookies were producing and helping. 59 yards. Michael Gallup, controversial offensive pass interference at the end of the game. I definitely wouldn't have called that, um, but they did, and uh, the Cowboys ended up losing that one. So those were the three games that I watched, but there was plenty of other games going on. So we'll break those down as well. The Buffalo Bills took on the New York Jets. Might be the worst team in the league with those Jets. Sam Darnold, 215 yards, a touchdown and a pick. Le'Veon Bell, six carries for 14 yards. Is it over for him? I think it might be. I believe he got hurt, too. Behind him, they have the uh, aging Frank Gore. Uh, the only good thing that that offense produced was Jamison Crowder, who's a PPR Machine, seven catches, 115 yards, and a touchdown. The Bills, you know, we, we've talked about this on Twist before, how exciting they have the potential to be. With Tom Brady out in New England, uh, New England did get a win yesterday, and Cam looked fresh and healthy. We'll get to that with that box score, but they had no troubles here. Josh Allen looked great. Threw it 46 times, 312 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. He also ran like he does, 14 carries for 57 yards and a touchdown. So three total touchdowns for Josh Allen. My fantasy liked that. The running back committee in Buffalo was split with nine carries apiece, 30 yards for Singletary, 11 yards for Zach Moss. Zach Moss did have three catches for 16 yards and a touchdown. So the big acquisition for the Bills this year, was the Vikings fleeced the Bills and sent over Stefan Diggs, who did get eight catches for 86 yards. So good for you, Stefan. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you were happy. A couple big upsets. Washington football team, 1-0, and beat the Philadelphia Eagles 27-17. to Dwayne Haskins, putrid. 178 yards and a touchdown. Uh, the big rookie, Antonio Gibson, who is supposed to be, you know, run CMC 2.0. Didn't really do much. Had nine carries for 36 yards. Peyton Barber, they gave the ball 17 times to him, but he couldn't get anything done with it besides two touchdowns. He did have 29 yards. Dwayne Haskins also ran seven times. First 17 yards terry mclaurin pretty much the only uh name on the receiving end did have 61 yards receiving wentz turnover machine he stayed healthy throughout it but he did throw two picks miles sanders did not play and benzie did not uh, put him on the bench michael buckheister host of mike and mike man hour hey vikings fan here Ah, oh, I lie, lie. Nine more L's to go. Well, thanks for tuning in, Buck. Yeah, it's a, it's a sad day. I'll tell you that. I did treat myself yesterday. Uh, we made some good food and ha had some good company. Uh, but anytime Green Bay Greg gets to gloat in your own house, it's a bad day. It's a bad day. I don't want, I don't want to talk about it. We're on one taking on the Colts next week and uh, we'll see, you know, but at least we didn't lose to the Washington football team. Oh, the other upset was the Jaguars over the Colts who I just mentioned. Phillip rivers slung it 363 yards, 46 times for one touchdown. And of course, two picks, he basically throws two picks every single game. The big story here in my opinion, wasn't that Jacksonville won. It was that Marlon Mack, they fear he has a torn Achilles, which is horrible news for him. Great news for me. I have Jonathan Taylor, rookie running back out of Wisconsin, drafted him to be my RB2, uh, and he's, he's in line for a big increase in workload. So I'm sure we'll get 
news today on how Marlon Mack is doing. Um, you know, they do have a good team, Paris Campbell, T.Y. Hilton. You know, they drafted Michael Pittman in the second round, Zach Pascal. Their defense, their offensive line is really what what people like. But uh, porn star Minshew, you know, he only didn't complete one pass. 173 yards and three touchdowns, no picks, 19 for 20. LaVisius Chenault, another rookie like I mentioned, uh, had a touchdown. So rookies were active. The Bears came back. And won it, those stupid Bears. Beat the Lions 27-23. to 23. Looked like the Lions were going to pull it off. But they didn't. DeAndre Swift dropped it to end the game. So two division games in the NFC North. The Bears and the Packers on top of it. The Ravens and the Browns. Kevin Stefanski led Browns. Put up six points. Baker Mayfield looked horrible. 189's touchdown and a pick. Kareem Hunt had more carries than Nick Chubb. Something to watch out for there. Lamar Jackson looked great. Three touchdowns, 275 yards, ran it for 45 yards. Another big story here, Mark Ingram only had 10 carries. J.K. Dobbins had all the goal line work. Another rookie, and he also had two touchdowns so something to see with these rookies as the season kind of progresses seahawks beat the falcons 38 25 raiders beat the panthers 34 30 the patriots cam newton led patriots beat the dolphins 21 11 the chargers beat the bengals 16 13 number one overall pick joe burrow nfl red zone had locked in on this so i got to see burrow Right at the end of the game, driving his team down, throws it to A.J. Green, who pushes off, gets the touchdown, but it was a flag. They go to kick the field goal. Kicker pulls his hammy, wide right, game over. The Cardinals upset the 49ers. Kyler Murray went off, looked phenomenal in this game. DeAndre Hopkins targeted about 3,000 times. And beat the 49ers 24 to 20. The battle of the old quarterbacks to end it out. The Saints beat the Buccaneers 34 23. Drew Brees is so old, they have to bring Taysom Hill in just to throw it over five yards. So this was uh, the game of the week, and the Saints ended up taking that one from Tom Brady. Well, that's it. A little breakdown of the NFL this week. Predictions for tonight's games. Well, I got the Steelers taking the Giants and the Broncos upsetting the Titans. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Mike on the Mike.